What's going on guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Infrared XH09, also known as the X2 in some markets. This device is a thermal imaging camera designed to connect to a smartphone and has some impressive features. However, it also has some major drawbacks that we'll cover later on in the video. First off, I'm basing all my opinions of using both the super popular Seek Compact Pro, as well as the Xi'an Li FireEye thermal cameras in a professional repair shop setting. Let's take a quick look at the X2's specs. This thermal imager boasts an impressive native 50Hz 256 by 192 sensor with a spectral range of 12 micrometers. For those who don't know, spectral range is the span of wavelengths that the sensor in the camera can detect. The X2 also features an overdrive function, which boosts the perceived resolution up to a claimed 384 by 288, although at the cost of a significant frame rate drop. For comparison, the Seek Compact Pro has a larger native resolution of 320 by 240, although the refresh rate is limited to just 15 Hz, or 15 FPS, with a spectral range between 7.5 and 14 micrometers. The X2 also has a claimed defining thermal sensitivity as low as 40 millikelvins, which sounds impressive when compared to the Seek, which is only stated at less than 70 millikelvins. Please note that Defining thermal sensitivity is an alternate term for noise equivalent temperature difference, or NETD, representing the minimal temperature variation detectable through a thermal device. Or, to put simply, smaller number better, make heat look good. We we'll be coming back to these impressive specs later when we discover the Achilles heel of the X2. Physically, the X2 is quite impressive as well. With a full alloy housing, along with adjustable smooth turning focus, something the FireEye doesn't have. As with the Seek, you can order the X2 in a Lightning Connector version or a Type-C variant. Although there is only the Thermal iX Android and iOS apps that support this camera, I'd still recommend getting the Type-C version and a cheap Android phone rather than the Lightning model, just in case any third-party PC software becomes compatible with it in the future. Looking back over at the lens quickly, unlike the Seek and the FireEye, the X2 has an extremely tight field of view, and that's for a specific reason. When you order the X2, it comes bundled with a handy phone holder and mount. This is because the X2 is marketed as a hunting camera above all else. This doesn't mean that you can't use the camera for other tasks, it just means that the software, and to an extent the product as a whole, has some funny quirks. For starters, there's only basic or close to no thermography controls available to you, and the functions that you can change are pretty basic. You can do your standard color palette options along with digital zoom and mild image manipulation like mirroring and the like. There is also emissivity settings, which are useful when dealing with shiny objects, but these options seem to do nothing here. Speaking of things that don't work how you'd expect, remember how I was talking about the thermal imager overdrive function where you can seemingly double the resolution? Infrared claims that this is a higher resolution, however when using it, it has that oil painting AI upscaler look to it. Digging into the spec sheet, the X3 function is listed as a patented image algorithm. Does this sound to you like it is in fact oversampling the sensor, or do you think it is just doing a little AI magic? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, as I'm perplexed of which one it actually is. The lower resolution is still better than that of the Seek in my opinion, but the saving grace that is higher frame rates. When working with electronics repair, the main function of a thermal camera is just to detect shorts. Sometimes shorts are only present for a brief moment, as in some cases they're on secondary lines that go quickly within the power on sequence, or they cause the device to go into protect mode, killing all power. The Seek for me would be annoying to use, because you could often miss these small blips, something that is mitigated by the FireEye and X2's higher frame rates. But probably the biggest mark against the X2 is the thermal range and reporting. Again, let me stress, for board work or quick short finding, this or the FireEye are great. But if you plan to use this camera for any kind of data logging or use it in places where you need to have a concise remote measurement, maybe look elsewhere. I have seen reports of users claiming a 15 degree delta in measured temperatures, which makes the function unreliable at best, but the biggest problem here is the range. Are you ready? The X2 only has a compatible temperature range of 0 to 100 degrees Celsius. Again, perfectly fine for finding stuff, not good for much else. As soon as you go over 100 degrees, the sensor gets washed out. I don't know if this is a hard limit or if it's limited artificially. More than likely, it's a trade-off for the higher refresh rate. So how is this useful for repair shops? I'd say if you can get it at a good deal, it's a great auxiliary thermal camera. Thanks to the tight field of view, 
you can keep it mounted out of the way while still getting a clear picture. It currently has the highest refresh rate out of any smartphone thermal imager, along with being very sensitive. So you can see faster and smaller shorts than before. Also, I'll have some links below to other thermal cameras if you'd like a one and done solution for your business. And that pretty much wraps up this review. If you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel a lot. And until next time, see ya.